This thing doesn't make any noise. Hey guys, thank you for your help. Guess what? We finally reached 100 subscribers here at Collector of Stuff. Everybody go, yay! Actually, we're a little bit over. We went to about 102 as of today's date, January 21st, 2015. Uh, ahead of the goal I had set for the end of February, which would mark my six months here on this channel on YouTube. And uh, here we are uh, two-thirds of the way through January, nearly the end of January. Uh, so we're a month, uh, about five weeks ahead of schedule uh, of my goal of reaching 100 subscribers. So thanks to you guys. Uh, so many of you have helped spread the word uh, about this channel. And uh, you guys know what it's like. For a while I uh, was getting close and gaining momentum. And then I got into the 90 plus subscribers and I would gain one and lose two and uh, gain one and lose one kind of thing overnight and um, then all of a sudden in the last three or four days kinda of had a rush of new subscribers thank you guys for subscribing to the channel we're excited about that here and I uh, can't do this without you it always uh, makes me excited when you guys comment and participate uh, in uh, what we're showing here so Thank you guys again. We did it. 100 subscribers. Yay! Um, I will not be uh, showing myself in uh, uh, a bikini or my rear end or anything like that like Mercy does. Uh, she's got a better body for something like that. Y'all don't want to see me do that. So. Uh, yeah, we're excited. Thank you so much for that. All right. Um, enjoying a good week here so far. Last couple of days here in uh, the southeast, or at least in my part of Tennessee, uh, have been extremely warm. The last two or three days, it's been like 63, 64 degrees. Beautiful sunshine, breeze blowing. It's like a spring day out there. It's absolutely gorgeous which makes me worry because February tends to be our coldest and snowiest and iciest month of the year so who knows what's gonna lie ahead of us there sorry my eye is itching um, I got a lot of things to show you today uh, actually this week picked up a lot of comics some cool magazines I want to show you some uh, DVDs movies and some other things uh, I think I'll do the movies and DVDs in a separate video um, just because this is going to be long enough with the books that we have so I'll do those you can look forward to those either later today or uh, tomorrow or something I'll, I'll do the, the DVD collection I actually have one coming in the mail and I may wait till that comes before I do that one add that to the video alright so uh, comic books let's talk about what we've collected this week got new books and some back issue stuff as well and the back issue stuff largely is filling in uh, some runs of uh, books that I am uh, missing. I don't, I don't like this shirt, the way it hangs down in the front like that. If I don't like pull it down in the back, uh, there you go. I feel like I'm down here and trying to be, be, uh, be cool or something, you know. That ain't me. All right, because I ain't cool. Uh, all right, first book, uh, new book. Let's start with the new ones, then we'll go with the back issues. Uh, first book we'll talk about from uh, Dark Horse Comics, Lady Killer, issue number one. Man, oh man, do I love this book! I have immediately added it to added it to my subscription list. Um, this book appears to be set in the 1950s. I'm not sure if it clarified that I'd have to go back and, and look and see but it gives all the evidence that it's kind of set in the 50s you can see on the cover uh, the main character there cleaning the blood in the kitchen um, in her uh, heels and uh, skirt and her uh, pearls and all that kind of stuff uh, so it has that leave it to beaver June Cleaver kind of feel to it in fact the artwork I love the coloring and the artwork in this book uh, those colors you can see just kind of reek of 1950s and early 60s uh, kind of uh, almost pastel sort of, of colors 
that you saw a lot in houses and kitchens and those kind of things uh, back in the day. Uh, what do we know about this league character? She is uh, supposed, uh, at least in the first issue, supposedly a loving mom and wife uh, who takes care of her family, and uh, she's also a uh, for-hire assassin, a brutal assassin, as a matter of fact. Uh, we don't know why. We don't know who she works for. We don't know what situation has uh, caused her to turn to being a, an assassin as far as the first issue goes. Uh, we do know that there is a, a gentleman that shows up um, towards the end of the book at her front door who appears to be her um, connection, who gives her her assignments and all of that. Uh, and I don't know who else picked up on it, but there seemed to be a very strong sexual tension between uh, our lead character and her uh, uh, her go-to person, her assignment uh, person, when they're conversing on the front porch, uh, there just seemed to be a lot of sexual tension between their uh, in their conversation. And then we see towards the end that the grandmother who lives with them, uh, she has a husband, she has children, and then there's her husband's mother uh, who has a tendency to want to speak in German and not English. Uh, looks out the window and sees her talking with this gentleman uh, when uh, the doorbell rang she actually uh, told her husband that it was one of her girlfriends so we'll wait and see what role the grandmother plays in this uh, kind of thing uh, so yeah a lot of uh, questions uh, presented very few answers given in the first issue which made it a well-written book it made you uh, want to ask a whole lot of questions and find out more information. Hopefully that will be given to us in the not-too-distant future, uh, in future issues. Lady Killer, man, I just love this. I love the pace of it. I love the artwork, the coloring, uh, the dialogue. There wasn't anything about this book that I did not like. Guys, if you're not reading Lady Killer, you got to get that. Uh, yeah, I love that. And by the way, I don't have Star Wars number one yet. Uh, that's on its way to me. Should be here tomorrow. I was able to um, to uh, get that ordered, and I am um, I wanted to get issue number one because I love Star Wars. I love. I've got tons of Star Wars comics from uh, uh, Dark Horse. Um, but I have a real issue with the whole 399 books from Marvel, and now here comes this one at 499. Now I ordered it from uh, Midtown Comics and got the uh, subscription, or my because I'm a subscriber, a, a discount there, and I think I got it for like 430 or 439 or 433 or something. There was like 60 cents off the cover price, kind of thing, which every little every little bit helps. However, I don't know if I, this book's got to be really good. I can't wait to read it and see what it's like uh, to even consider buying a $5 book every month. Um, man, I just don't know. I, I limited my uh, limited my Marvel to uh, one book uh, that I was going to subscribe to for $3.99 at that price because I just wasn't going to pay those prices um, for Marvel. And I had been subscribing to Amazing Spider-Man. However, um, I just got to where I couldn't stand it. I couldn't stand the artwork. I didn't like the stories. They weren't entertaining. But I just didn't like looking. I didn't like looking at Peter Parker. I didn't look like, didn't enjoy looking at Spider-Man uh, or any of the other characters. The artwork. I just don't like Spider-Man right now, and that's a shame because I grown up loving Spider-Man. Love Spider-Man of the 70s and 80s and 90s. I've got a whole long box full of Spider-Man of the 90s uh, issues. Uh, so it's kind of breaking my heart that I don't like it. So I dropped Spider-Man and now I am picking up Daredevil as my one uh, Marvel 399 book uh, that I'm going with at the moment. This is actually the second issue that I've gotten. Uh, so I'm trying to jump in there and figure out what's going on and who's who and what's what. All I can tell you so far, this is issue number 12. 
so I'm not too far along that I couldn't go back and get the back issues and uh, and uh, do the whole run and get up to speed. But all I can tell you right now is uh, Daredevil has moved to San Francisco. He's no longer in New York. Uh, and in this issue, he does two things. Now, to be a comic book reader, I understand the concept of suspension of disbelief. If you're going to read comics and you're going to argue every point from a, a you know, a realistic, natural, scientific method, then comic book reading is not for you. Uh, you have to accept the fact that Superman can fly. Uh, if you can't buy that because people don't fly, then you're not, you know, if you can't accept that, then you can go on and enjoy the character and the stories. So, what is it about Daredevil? Well, Daredevil, of course, is blind, and uh, all of his other senses are heightened, which helps him in his fight against crime. In this issue, it opens up with Daredevil riding a motorcycle across the top cables of the Golden Gate Bridge in San Francisco. He is chasing after someone on a motorcycle. So he's driving a motorcycle across the beams. Later on in the book, for several pages, he's in a high-speed car chase through uh, traffic, weaving in and out of traffic. And he's driving this car, it's a convertible, driving this car standing up using his poles and sticks to accelerate and to steer the car while he's blind. Now, I, you know, like I said, I don't have any issues with suspension of disbelief. However, I kept reading this book page after page going, <sighs> holy cow, you're pushing the limits of my belief of uh, how how much Daredevil can do I you know I don't know uh, of course the guy leaps from building to building and swings from place to place uh, w using his other senses so can he drive a car I guess he can I don't know it just seemed a bit far-fetched to me uh, so did I enjoy that particular issue I like the character of Daredevil I liked his personality and I liked the dialogue but those that particular scene especially driving the car standing up using this you know I don't know it did very little for me uh, Walking Dead 136 uh, continuing to deal with the aftermath of psychopath Carl and his murderous ways Carl is uh, has been locked up by his own group uh, so they can figure out who he is and what he is and for his own safety and their safety and all of that as he went on a killing uh, killing spree but he claims it was self-defense uh, so he's locked up in a little cell and next door is a girl that they uh, captured as well from the supposed enemy young girl his own age and she's dealing with being locked up and Carl's dealing with being locked up and they're having a conversation between the walls they cannot see each other but they can hear each other and they're um, conversing about just how did they get to this place and what's it like to kill people and what's it like to try to live in a society where they're trying to stop killing people and uh, uh, rise above that and rebuild society and culture and all of that. So uh, the majority of this book was Carl and this young girl having a discussion about all of that. Uh, it was not a great fast paced issue at all. Uh, I don't believe there was even one freaking zombie in the whole book. Um, and I understand that it's got to be moving. I tell you why I'm having trouble uh, with this. I, for so long, read uh, Walking Dead in all the hardback uh, issues, like 20 issues at a time. Uh, so I was used to kind of reading at a faster pace and what was going on and now that I am collecting in the singles I'm finding this storyline to be a whole lot slower and you know to get that for a month to tide me over <clears throat> I'm turning to other zombie related books and I'm going to show you those here in a minute to help me out uh, Injustice Gods Among Us Year 3 issue number 7 Love this series. Cami Reader 1717, um, commented on this book in her, her last video. Uh, she's actually the first person I remember talking about this title. 
I absolutely love this series. I know that it's based on a video game. I am not a video game player other than a few Wii games here and there. Uh, so I'm not familiar with the video game. Uh, I know that this is year three and there was a year one and year two, which I have not read. I uh, just picked this title up starting with year three and absolutely um, love this title. The uh, It's an other worlds kind of story. Um, where uh, Superman has uh, supposedly murdered the Joker and kind of set himself up in a new regime uh, uh, for you know morality and all of that stuff but he's basically divided the uh, world of superheroes into two teams and Superman and Batman at this point are in um, have been uh, greatly divided into two teams and so uh, uh, most of the uh, the DC characters show up, uh, DC heroes show up in this title. However, one that I really had not had any experience with, I was just you know aware of, was Constantine, uh, who plays a you know a great role in this story and is sort of an antagonist between both uh, Superman and Batman um, in a lot of ways. Just his his edginess and his conversation. I'm really enjoying getting to know Constantine in this. Uh, in issue number seven, basically the whole issue is a dream of Superman having a, um, a dream about the perfect life and what it would like to be like to have a family and a child with, uh, with Lois. Uh, that kind of thing. So uh, I won't give too much away. Uh, I am aware that there is a change in the creative team coming up uh, on this after this issue I believe so I need to uh, do my research on that uh, if there is I hope that it doesn't affect the quality of this storyline because uh, man outstanding book I really enjoy it and I, I enjoy seeing that tension like never before that I've seen between Superman and, and Batman I mean they really are um, battling and, and at odds uh, the specter has shown up in the last few issues as well, playing a very key role in what's going on, and that's another character that I've not read too much about, just a little bit. Uh, last new book that I picked up, Batman Eternal 41, I have not read it yet. You can see that's my enthusiasm for this book. I uh, keep hanging on, giving hope, uh, but I have not read this one yet. Um, Batman Eternal, um, Damien, Sleepy Reader 666, put it put it best, it is the Swiss cheese of, of comics. Uh, you'll have to ask him what he meant by that, but I just thought that was hilarious. Uh, yeah, so I haven't read that. What back issues uh, have I picked up? Well, I was actually one issue behind on Injustice, so uh, I had to pick up issue number six as well, so I was able to read six and seven this week uh, to make sure that I knew what was going on. Uh, I mentioned in a previous video my used bookstore. I picked up issues number two through eight of an eight issue series from Marvel called Ozma of Oz. Thanks to um, thanks to uh, 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 Mile High Comics I was able to locate issue number one. Um, I just picked this up. I was able to find the other, other issues. I think they were $2 a piece. I paid for them at the bookstore. Uh, I forgot what I paid for this one, but, um, but I just wanted to get it. The artwork is just absolutely beautiful. This is a 2011 title from Marvel. Um, and uh, again, Damien, um, Sleepy Reader 666, uh, filled me in that Ozma of Oz is actually one of the other um, books in the Oz series. You know, we're all familiar with Wizard of Oz, but in the Frank uh, L. Braun uh, children's book series, uh, the third book was actually Ozma of Oz. So this is a comic adaptation in eight issues of that. So I've been waiting to get issue number one uh, before I started reading the this series so glad to have that another series that has been fun but I had sporadic issues uh, from Image Comics is Southern Bastards and I had like issues number one and two and then added it to my pool list so I got like issue number six 
so I was kind of behind on what was going on when I kind of looked at issue number six. Uh, no longer am I behind because I have uh, picked up issue number three, issue number four, and issue number five. Uh, again, if you are reading this series, please do not judge all Southerners on what you read here. We're not all like this. However, again, I reiterate, it is a great representation of small town life in many places in the southeast part of the United States. The story is set in a small town in Alabama. And, uh, yeah, I mean, there's just uh, places like this all around me. But, uh, yeah, fun, fun series. I know many of you guys are reading that. Uh, also filling in the gaps with Marvel and uh, Disney Kingdom's Figment. Uh, I had issues number one and four out of a five issue series. So I really hadn't read it because I was waiting to say I read number one. Uh, so now I'm filling in the gaps. I have issue number three and issue number five. And I have issue number two on its way to me from Lone Star Comics. Should be here tomorrow or the next day. And I'll be able to uh, finish reading this five issue set. I'll have all of that. Uh, fun kind of a, a kid's book as well. Uh, not a kid's book uh, that I am enjoying greatly from Image. You can see there's a lot of Image uh, out there. Uh, it's really kind of become my number one go to uh, publisher. Uh, Manifest Destiny. Great title. And again, I had some sporadic issues. I had like one and two and then four and five and nine and ten and twelve or something like that it was kind of crazy so I wasn't able to really understand everything that was going on so uh, I picked up another short haul of that the other week I think two and three or something like that now I'm filling in the gaps and I have issue number seven issue number eight show you those uh, covers a little better and issue number 11 now I have all 12 issues of Manifest Destiny if you are not reading this uh, I encourage you to do so if you're not familiar with the book uh, in a nutshell Lewis and Clark the Explorers it, it, it combines um, historical fact with fiction um, uh, Lewis and Clark have been sent out uh, by the president to explore the new world, to journal and catalog and and uh, report back and all that stuff. And that's what publicly they're doing is just going out and exploring the new world. Privately, the president also knows that there are creatures and monsters out there in the new land and they are to go out and find them, uh, destroy them, and catalog and report back uh, what they're finding. So. Yeah, there's a dark side to uh, to Lewis and Clark and what they were discovering here in the new world of America. Uh, I, I mentioned to you my discontent with the slow moving of Walking Dead lately. Um, so I started looking and I picked up some time ago uh, just as a blind buy because I wanted to see what it was. Uh, a book from Image again. It was an issue number one called 68 Homefront. Uh, what I found out is that 68, uh, they did a several series of like four issue books. There was 68 Homefront, 68 Run Through the Jungle, 68 Jungle, Jungle Gym, 68 Scar, Scar or Scarred or something like that. There were four or five of those and each one of those were four issue series. I just happened upon 68 Homefront and read the first issue. Uh, and just thought it was fantastic for a zombie book. So I'm kind of finishing that four issue run. Here's number two, issue number three. Again, sorry for the glare. And issue number four. Man, this is a fantastic series. Uh, when these books came uh, yesterday, I read all three of them, bam, 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 because I wanted to get into the story. Uh, 1968. Vietnam War is going on. This particular four issue series is what happens back here in the home front, uh, back home in the States when the zombie apocalypse uh, takes place in 1968. The other series, like Run Through the Jungle, from what I've been able to research, um, 
or what happens to, in Vietnam to soldiers in the jungle when uh, the zombie apocalypse uh, hits. So I haven't read any of those. I did research uh, on Amazon. They seem to have all those other titles in uh, trade paperback. So I will probably just buy all the rest of those in, in trades instead of singles. Uh, because it's a great, well-written zombie book. And right now, if I had to compare 68 Homefront to Walking Dead at the pace that it's going, man, now this is this is a back issue. This is like two... What year did this come out? I want to say, but I know I'm going to be wrong if I do. Yeah, this was last year, 2014. I wanted to say it was 2013, but I, again, I would have been wrong, so I'm glad I checked. Uh, yeah, uh, this was issue number two, came out in October of 2014, so it wrapped up. Uh, man, was that a good good four-issue story series, 68 Homefront from Image, and like I said, there's a whole bunch of others, and they all seem to be four-issue series, so uh excited to have that uh in the collection all right that's the comic books holy cow 26 minutes just talking about comic books uh i've been uh wanting to start collecting some concert posters of artists that are that i really like who are influential not just uh you know random so i picked up this uh, really cool billy joel uh concert poster nassau coliseum uh this was from the uh doesn't have the year on it, but it was obviously by the look of him, I would say it's late 70s, early 80s. I'm going to say this was from the 70s, but uh, really cool. I'm going to have a wall in my hallway down there, and I'll show you when I get it finished. Uh, of 11 by 17 uh, concert posters. We'll have those all together. Uh, next up, what else did I get? Holy mackerel. I got a whole box full of back issue uh, wizard magazines. Now, if you've watched my channel for some time, you know that I uh, loved Wizard Magazine, which of course is no longer in publication. There's a Wizard World web page, uh, website that does information and stuff. But uh, you might be asking, why is he so interested in 20 to 25 year old uh, price guides? Wizard was so much more than a price guide. As a matter of fact, the price guide was always in the back of the book and uh, probably took up the, the last 10 to 20% of the whole magazine. The other 80% of the magazine were fantastic artwork, fantastic interviews and previews and up to dates and just all kinds of fun stuff, uh, comic book related. I subscribed to Wizard, got that in my pool list every month back in the 90s and then um, when I started having to move from town to town and um, uh, some other things you know I just kind of sort of got rid of uh, a whole bunch of my wizards most of my wizards I held on to a, uh, a good handful of issues that I like now I regret that I did that and I'm trying to go back and re just recollect and have some in the uh, in the magazine collection. Uh, so I got a whole lot of, it's about 17 or 18 back issues and I paid just a few bucks for this. It was unbelievable. What do I have? This is uh, uh, November 1993 with uh, Wildcats on the front. This was like a pull out, uh, pull out cover kind of thing. You got a nice Spider-Man advert or X-Men Spider-Man advert there. Uh, on the inside of the pullout. Uh, if you're not familiar with Wizard Magazine, uh, there was a price guide uh, included in every issue in the back, but you just got really cool uh, stories and uh, uh, you know artwork throughout the, the magazine itself uh, every month. And uh, yeah, I just absolutely loved it. There was that issue. Here is uh, uh, February '94 with uh, Marvel's Beavis and Butthead comic, which uh, I have quite a good run of that. And I'm adding to that. Um, November '96, uh, The Marriage of Superman on the cover. April 2000, Black Widow 
on the cover. Uh, I'll try to speed this up, but I'm trying to show you the dates. This is March 2004. Everybody knows who that is on the front. Uh, April 2004. They move the date to different places on the cover, so I'm having to search. Sometimes it's at the top, sometimes it's at the bottom, sometimes it's on the left, and sometimes it's on the right. This was a jumbo 150th issue mega movie issue. This was also April 2004. Uh, all these were just in a in a lot being offered on an eBay dealer. Uh, June 2005. Uh, May 2005. Uh, this is uh, cool. I'm one I'm wanting to get into. Uh, October 2005, uh, where they talk about the 100 greatest cartoons of all time. Uh, so I can't wait to read that one. Uh, and then this is November 2005. Now, <clears throat> just notice this is typical magazine style publication with a nice spine. Where you can read that. There you go. Nice spine. Uh, and then uh, by this time I had stopped subscribing and picking up Wizard, so I hadn't followed it along by the uh, late 2000s and uh, by th this next issue they had gone to just a flat non-spine uh, magazine and uh, so they, they kind of changed that. This is uh, July 2008 and uh, September 08 Uh, November 08. December 08. June 09. The 100 Greatest Graphic Novels of Our Lifetime. It's another issue I look forward to uh, digging into. And then last but not least... Uh, this was uh, February 2011, and uh, this was in there last year. If I remember correctly, Wizard stopped their magazine publication in 2011. I'm not sure what month or what was the exact last issue. I need to research that because I'd like to pick that up, what was the last issue of, uh, of Wizard. So uh, that will go in my magazine collection, and uh, like I said, I already have a, a good... Uh, good run on Wizard Magazine. So those are just fun to go back and look. And for me, I'm very nostalgic. I think most collectors are. You're, you're nostalgic about whatever it is that you're collecting. Uh, and um, especially in the 90s, that was the heyday of the beginning of my comic collecting and uh, was just buying tons and tons and tons of titles from the 90s. So when you start slamming the 90s, yeah, I know it had some issues and there were some things about it and if you're collecting because you want to make money and you're mad because books in the 90s aren't worth much well then so be it but uh, there were some great stories and uh, great books that happened in the 90s so I'm going to defend the 90s uh, comic books when you start slamming it uh, because I don't I'm not a collector for money um, I collect what I, I love what uh, uh, Tom, uh, Hippies Collectible, says in every video, uh, collect what you love and love what you collect. That's what I do. I collect what I love. I don't collect for money. So I love my 90s books. Someday I'll show you all of them. But anyways, holy cow, we've done 35 minutes. And I didn't even talk about the DVDs and movies that I picked up this week. We'll do that in a separate video coming up real soon. Y'all have a wonderful, blessed day. Thank you for watching. If you like this video, give it a thumbs up. Leave your comments below. Subscribe to the channel. Let's go to 150. We got 102 as of today. Let's make it 150. Uh, thanks for watching, and until next time, bye.